What's up everybody, Nicola here. So unless you've been living under a rock this past year, you've been around to witness a large spike in unemployment numbers as companies struggled to stay profitable during a time of many closures, people working from home, and low consumer spending. Because of these unemployment numbers, the job market has been tough for many professions. However, this isn't a problem for us, right? Because I mean, come on, we're the tech industry. No rules apply here, there's so much demand, you can just watch a couple YouTube videos, go out on the street, and just pick up the first job you find and then drive around in a Porsche. You can make fun of all your friends who didn't become programmers like you did. Well, obviously that's not quite true anymore. And honestly, I don't think it was ever true despite what the YouTube gurus and the raging tech stocks tell you. Has the market become so oversaturated that it's just impossible to find a job unless you have a ton of experience? Is all hope lost for people who are trying to become programmers right now or who are thinking about getting into this field? Well, if you stay tuned to the end of the video, my friend, I will give you the secret. Okay, so is the software development market saturated? Well, the true answer is almost every single market is saturated. Take a look at even the most desirable, desirable fields, law, medicine, finance, they're all kind of saturated. Keep in mind that these are careers that people tell you to pursue and even the people who criticize millennials for taking out like student loans that are way too big will look at these careers and say, well, I mean, it's actually fine to get such a huge loan if you're going to take this advanced degree because that almost guarantees a job. But that doesn't mean that these markets aren't saturated. As I said, almost every single market is saturated. Obviously, these fields have a demand. We need tons of experienced and capable doctors, lawyers, financial experts. People need them every single day. But if you're a junior, someone who just graduated from college, you don't have experience doing these things, it's going to be really tough to prove to people that you can provide value. This is true in all of these fields, and this is also true in programming. For programming, this applies to anyone who doesn't have experience. You know, experience is like a track record because essentially it supports your claim that you're going to provide the value that the company thinks you're going to provide. But if companies have so many positions to fill, you know, so much demand for programmers, why don't they just hire a bunch of juniors? There's a bunch of juniors applying. So it simply comes down to this. Most companies, believe it or not, are not nonprofit. That means, that they're here to make money. So if they're going to hire you and pay you X, you need to be bringing them more than X money for them to hire you and you have to prove that you're able to do that. And what's the best way for a company to increase their odds of getting this? Well, they hire someone who has a track record or experience of bringing companies more than X. That way they know that if they hire this person, there's a high likelihood that they'll bring them more than X which is what they're paying them. You see, for a while, programming got this reputation that it was so in demand that companies would just hire anybody. Like, you would just be walking on the street and companies would walk up to you and be like, hey you, you in the black, come with us. You're going to be a programmer. People were selling this narrative that you could like quickly learn to code, maybe watch some tutorials, do a quick boot camp, and then you could just walk around the street, turn the corner, pick up the first programming job you find, you'll instantly get hired. So this might have been true at some point, maybe, maybe not. It's definitely not true right now. However, I feel like people are slowly coming to this realization and then they're actually creating this false reverse narrative where they're saying that programming is now so oversaturated, there's so many people learning to program, there's no jobs, it's a terrible thing to get into, you definitely don't wanna go into programming, it's absolutely impossible to get a job. So no, absolutely not. Just because you can't find a job instantly, just like people were saying before, does not make programming not an in-demand industry. You know what I'm saying? It's still very much in demand, even more in demand than many of the professions that I named earlier. It's just not as instantaneous job, so in demand, overwhelmingly crazy, as people used to claim in their narratives. So then, how do you get a job if you're a junior, if you're someone who doesn't have experience, or if you're someone who's just looking to get into programming? So for starters, some companies, mostly large companies who have extra money, will hire juniors solely because these juniors have potential. So they have the extra capital to take a chance on juniors 
in hopes that they will become very, very productive engineers in the future. Getting a position like this is one option for juniors, although these can be very, very competitive. A lot of times they go to people who come from colleges that are very reputable or students who have several internships worth of experience um, and they have like a track record that shows that they have the potential to become successful engineers one day. These positions might be out of reach for many people who are just getting into programming um, or people who are not in the position that I just described. Okay, but what about these other companies? Why on earth would they hire juniors when they can just hire seniors who have experience who are much more likely to get stuff done, much more likely to produce value? Why would anyone hire juniors? Let me let you in on a little industry secret that you definitely don't know. Juniors, they make less money than seniors. So companies have to pay them less. Sometimes companies even pay juniors half as much as they're paying their seniors. This means that every company is trying to find that gem of a junior that they can pay half the amount that they'll pay a senior, but this junior will produce a ton of value way more than what they're paying them. And I can prove this. If you look on Indeed, there are tons and tons of companies hiring junior engineers, entry-level engineers. It's not just companies hiring only senior engineers with tons of experience, but they're looking for junior engineers who will produce more value than what they need to pay them. Yes, companies are looking for good, cheap junior developers. And this is exactly where the joke comes from, that companies are looking for someone who has 10 years of experience and knows 15 different frameworks, but they're still a junior developer. So what does this mean for the junior developer? Well, it means that if they're looking for a gem, you're going to have to prove that you are that gem at least until you have enough experience that you can command the higher salary of a senior developer. This means that unfortunately, as a junior developer, you're going to have to prove to companies that you are better than the average junior developer. They need to think that you're an exceptional junior developer. And this is contrary to the old narrative that literally anybody can walk in, get every single job they want. Unfortunately, that's not true. You're going to have to show that you are a star junior developer. But how do you make yourself stand out amongst all these junior developers? How do you make yourself look better than the average? Well, I think this is a topic for another video, but I'm gonna point out a few very quick things. The best way is obviously to have experience. So if you're still in school, or if you're just starting school, try your best to get some internships. Get some work experience while you're in school so that once you graduate, you can show that you've worked in the industry, you kind of know the ropes, you're much more likely to be a productive junior engineer than someone who has no internship experience. If you've already graduated and this isn't an option for you, then spend some time building out your resume. If you don't have a big technical project on there, really spend some time to work on a more complicated, more technical uh, side project that might take a little while that showcases that you're proficient in technologies that are very useful to companies. So if you want to work, say, as a front-end developer in React, build out a technical project, a web application using React, so that you can prove to companies that you're comfortable using this framework. Now notice that building out a more complicated, more technical project requires some work. It's not exactly the same as spending a couple of hours coding something up, hacking something together really quickly, or listing a school project on your resume. But these are the things, like a one or two month project, that'll help you stand out from all the other junior developers who are applying to the same roles. Get some friends and colleagues to look over your resume. I know a lot of the time when we look at our own resume, we think that it's absolutely perfect and we have no idea why companies aren't hiring us. But I'm telling you, if you get a bunch of good friends who will take some time to look over your resume, they'll point out some errors or issues that you maybe didn't see and then you can use advice from several different people to construct the perfect resume. Lastly, once you get the interview, make sure that you've practiced enough technical and algorithm questions so that you absolutely nail it. So you wanna have tons of practice with stuff like Lee code and other similar types of questions. You do not wanna mess it up once you get to the stage where you have the interview. So the final verdict. Good software engineers 
are highly in demand and they will be highly in demand for the foreseeable future. The entry level market is a little saturated just like every single other profession and it's a little bit difficult to get a job as entry level. But that does not mean that programming is not a good industry to get into or that if you're thinking about learning programming, you should not get into it. It's still a very in-demand industry. So what do you think? Is software engineering an in-demand industry? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this. And other than that, hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.